Hi, if you want to create a mega menu in Elementor, I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video using Elementor Pro and the plus add-ons for Elementor. Now, Elementor themselves recommend the plus add-ons in order to create beautiful mega menus. If we take a look at their blog post, you'll see the difference between a default WordPress menu, one that can get quite messy very quickly, and a mega menu. These are used by some of the top websites in the world and they look fantastic and give much better user experience. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create horizontal mega menus, vertical mega menus, and also toggle sidebar mega menus as well. We're gonna cover each and every step starting from scratch so that by the end of this video, you're gonna be confident in how to do it. I'm Jack with Jack in the Net, bringing you this guest tutorial on behalf of the Plus add-ons for Elementor. Make sure to subscribe to their channel, that way you don't miss out on the upcoming tutorials and check out my own channel for all things WordPress. Now, let's dive in. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is activate the Mega Menu. To do that, come on down to the Plus Settings, then go on over to Plus Widgets, and if you use the search text box, search for navigation, and you're looking for TP navigation menu, which comes as part of the pro package. Turn this on, click save, and then when you've done that, come on over to performance and just remember to clear the cache. Also do the same if you have a third party caching plugin as well. Now that we've done that, you'll see that we have the plus mega menu, which has been added to our toolbar over here on the left hand side of our WordPress dashboard. So click into this and then click on add new. Now what we're going to do here is create a template for our mega menu. So if we take a look up here at the plus add-ons quickly, you'll see that we've got different sections, mobiles and tablets, electronics, so what we're gonna do here is create the first section that we want. Each of these sections of the Mega Menu are gonna be created as templates within Elementor. So let's start with Mobiles and Tablets. Click on Publish, and then click Edit with Elementor. Now, you may have this issue where Elementor couldn't load and you get a 404 error. Don't panic if you do, simply go back. Come on over to settings and then go to permalinks. We just need to refresh them. It doesn't matter what you have selected here. If you have a custom structure, you might just want to copy it for a moment because we'll paste it back there in a second. But whatever you've got, change it to a different one. In this instance, I'll just change over to plain and click save changes. Then it says here permalinks updated. And then what we can do is just switch it back to whatever it was before. If it was a custom one, just paste it back in and then save changes again. That's just reset our permalinks. What we can now do is head back over to the Mega Menu, Mobiles and Tablets, and this time when we edit with Elementor, it'll load up just fine. Okay, so this will be the template for our Mega Menu and we can create this in any way that we want. We can use any of Elementor's widgets or any of the Plus add-ons widgets. So for example, we could give ourselves three columns we could drag an image in, come on over into image, upload a file, and then we could insert it on into the page. And then this would appear inside our mega menu. So just build it up however you want it. All of the widgets that you would find in Elementor normally are ones that you can use here. So you get the idea, put in whatever you want, or alternatively, the other thing we can do, if we get rid of this, is we can actually copy and uh, paste over any of the templates that you find here on the Plus Add-ons website. Or if you have another site that you've already created a mega menu on using the Plus Add-ons, you can simply copy and paste your design over from one site to the other. I'll show you how we can do that. What we need to do, if we come out of here, Go back to the plus settings, head on over to widgets, and then this time we want to be searching for cross domain paste. So put in cross and you'll find it down here, cross domain copy and paste. Turn this on, again save, clear the cache. Then what we can do, if we go back to our template, 
If we have a look at their site, you'll see that we have the option to copy. Now, we're going to do a separate video going into the live copy feature in a lot of detail, but for your menus, you'll see that it highlights this inner section. These are our templates as opposed to the outer section. We don't want that at the moment, so we just want a template. So let's say that we wanted this gallery here. Well, what we can do is just click on copy. You'll see it says copied up here. Head on back over to your own site. And what we can do is add a section and then right click. And instead of copying as you normally would with Elementor, down here you'll see that you have plus copy and plus paste. If you were copying from an existing site that you currently have, you would use this option but we've obviously just copied from their website, so we want to click the paste button, and that has pasted it across, but of course we're not seeing things, at least not exactly as they appeared over here. And the reason for that is because we have to have all the widgets enabled. So whatever widgets that they are using on here, you have to have enabled from the plus widget section. So what we would do is update this, go to the plus settings again, go to widgets, and make sure that you have turned on all of the widgets that you're trying to copy over. For the ease of this tutorial, I'm just going to enable everything. And now when we head back, it doesn't matter what you want to copy across, because we've got those widgets enabled, we'll be able to do so. For example, our contact section, we could copy this, put it into our page, and it'll load up for us. Obviously, it's not going to load the contact form because we haven't created one ourselves, but you get the idea. Now, important note here, if you're trying to copy over things like blog posts, for example, or products, you need to have blog posts set up on your own website or WooCommerce installed with products. You obviously don't have to have exactly the same ones as what you have here, but if you don't have them currently on your own website, then just like this form, it's not going to be able to pull anything through. Okay, so whether it's a contact form, whether it's a blog post, whether it's WooCommerce products, make sure you have some already on your website so that you could actually go in and then choose them. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to be there. So for this one, I call this mobile and tablet. So we actually want to be using this particular template that we have here. And it doesn't matter that we're finding this one from their vertical mega menu section. We can still use that in the horizontal one. That's not a problem. So click copy, head on over, add a section, right click, plus paste, and there we go. It copies it across, it brings us the image as well, it brings us all of our different options and the nice hover feature that we've got there. And once you've done that, of course, all you'd need to do is go in to that individual widget and then change them. So you can obviously name it how you want to name it, and then you can obviously put in the link that you're wanting it to link to down here. Don't forget, you can also go into styles. We have separate video for each of these widgets. So this one's about the mega menu. I'm not gonna go into this here, but just so that you know, you can obviously then adjust the styling of everything that you see here as well. Once we've done that, click on update and exit back to dashboard. So now all you need to do is repeat that step and create a new item for each one of the sections that you want to appear in your mega menu. So there we go. I have now created a few templates there for our mega menu. Now what we want to do is create the menu itself. So come on over to Appearance, go to Menus. If you have an existing menu, you can simply add to this one, or we can create a new menu up here. Let's give it a name, Mega Menu. Now if you don't see the option for your Plus Mega Menu over here on the left, come on up to your Screen Options just up here and make sure that you have this ticked. When you've done that, you will now find it over here on the left. And we can then take all of these that we just created from our Plus Mega Menu section and add them to the menu. Now that we've done that, we need to create some custom links. I'll put in a hash symbol. That means that when somebody goes to click on this in the menu, it won't actually go to anywhere. And we'll call this Mobiles and Tablets. Add to Menu. So that's our custom link. We want to drag that above our Mega Menu template and we drag that to the side so that it becomes a sub item. If you want to, you can rename it. We can just call it sub so that you're not confused. 
And the reason that we're doing that is because if we didn't have custom links and you just left these on their own, then your mega menu would just be open by default. We obviously want to be able to hover over links within the menu in order for the mega menu to appear. So that's why we're creating these custom links. So now that we've done that, you'll see that you will have several other options here, including labels and icons. We're going to be coming back to that in just a couple of minutes time. For now, though, we want to save our menu and we want to create that header menu using an Elementor template. So come on over to templates up here and go to your theme builder, come over to header and click on add new. By the way, in this tutorial, I'm using Elementor Pro and the template builder to design a header. However, you can do it another way. Posimyth, the company behind the Plus add-ons for Elementor, have come out with a new WordPress theme. It is called Nexter. You can get it by going to nexterwp.com. There you can get the free version and with it you can build yourself a header using Elementor and all the widgets. So everything else that I'm showing you in this tutorial can be done with that theme if you don't want to get Elementor Pro and use the template builder. I'll be continuing to use that for this tutorial because the Nexter theme is not technically out for another couple of weeks, but go and grab it, download it, and then you can use that if you prefer. Now, let's get back to the video. We'll give this one a name and create a template. Now, there are lots of options here. You can use one of the Elementor's templates. You don't have to. If you want to, you can create one of your own. Again, just create the number of columns that you want and drag in widgets. You can choose one of Elementor's many templates. For example, we could go with this one here. Now, by default, you'll see that it has put our menu in here, but it's not doing anything. And that's because Elementor can't do this by itself. So what we actually need to do is come over to widgets, search for navigation, and then grab your navigation menu, which comes with the plus add-ons and drag that on into the page instead. It will then give you the option over here on the left to actually select a menu. So from here, we want to choose our mega menu, which is the one we just created. And then we see that that appears. We can then compare the two. So this is your default Elementor menu, which does nothing. And this is our mega menu that we've just created. That's the difference between the widgets. So we can delete that and now simply use this. I'll show you how to style this up in just a moment. The other option that we could of course do is once again, copy something over from the plus add-ons. So if we wanted to actually have this entire header, this time we would use the copy over here. Go back to our site, plus paste. That brings it in. I always find it quite useful here to right click and open the navigator. And now we can actually explore how this has been built. So for example, we can find our navigation menu. We can't see it at the moment because we haven't got a menu selected. So select it from the navigator, come on over and choose our mega menu. And now it appears. Now you may have an issue with some of the fonts, uh, font icons. If I save this, let's preview it and I'll show you what I mean. So if we look at what we just put in, we can't see the social media icons. If we look at their example, we've got some up here. They're missing from here. Easy fix. What we can do is close out of here, go back to the dashboard, go to Elementor and to settings, head on over to advanced, and then down here you'll find the font awesome four. So change this to yes, save changes, and then head on back to our template. And now there we go. We've got our social icons now appearing. That looks a whole lot better. Now, let's delete this one up here. And before we go any further, I'm just gonna show you the difference between horizontal and vertical menus. So if we find our navigation widget again, drag it into the page, select our menu. So this is a horizontal menu, goes from side to side. We can change it to a vertical menu, then it stacks one on top of the other. or you can have a vertical side menu. That looks like this, it gives us a little drop down and then it brings us our vertical menu. Looks really bad at the moment, don't worry. I'm gonna show you in just a minute how to change the width settings of all of this and obviously style it up as well. But before we do that, 
let's copy and paste in each of their templates so that we can see what we're doing. So we've already got our horizontal menu. Let's copy our vertical one, bring this on into the page. Once again, we can't see it at first. So right click, navigator, go to the navigation menu and put in our menu. And then we'll do the same thing for our little toggle bar that we've got up here. So copy, add section, and plus paste. So there we go. Now we've got all three. We're almost at the stage of starting to style this up. But just before we do, I'm going to show you how we can change the width settings of our mega menu and also how we can add in some labels. Again, you'll see that they have labels on here, which are a really nice feature. And you've also got icons as well, both of which are missing by default on what we've just pulled through. So let's do that. Save our draft and exit back to the dashboard. From here, go back to Appearance and Menus. And now this is where we want to start taking a look at our additional settings. So under the custom link one, let's first of all add a label. So let's have this one say New. Label color is the color of the text. So let's just make that white. And then let's give it a background color of green. And then we can change the width down here. So the options you have are default container and full width. For default, you can set the maximum pixel width. So if you wanted a really small mega menu, for example, we could just put in 300 pixels and that would be the maximum width that it would display on the screen. Alternatively, we could have container. That will very much depend upon the size that you currently have set up on your web page, and it'll stick with the containers that you have. Or of course, you can change it to full width. So if I just do that quickly for all of them, Now let's save the menu, head on back to our template page and refresh it. And now we can immediately see a couple of things. We have the new icon label, which has appeared. I'll show you how to maneuver that around in a second. And also it has gone full width, which is my personal favorite. I really like it. And it's very important for the vertical menu because before it was all cramped up, wasn't it? Whereas now it's nicely appearing across the page. Let's just preview this, get rid of that toolbar on the side so you've got a bit of a better view. That looks fantastic. So cool. Okay, so now I just need to show you how to add the icons in front of here. Now there are a couple of ways of doing that. For example, if we wanted one in front of mobiles and tablets. Come to our custom link, and here you have icon type. Now you've got two options, one that simply says icon, which gives you an icon class, and one that gives you an icon image. If it's an image, it's quite simple. So if I show you with the electronics one, so let's bring this up here. Go to icon image, set image. So let's go with, I don't know, picture of the camera here. Click select, click save. That's nice and simple. Refresh the page, we'll take a look at it. So it's very small until we change it, but it has appeared. We can click on the widget, come over to style. We'll have a look at these fully in just a moment. But under the main menu section, you'll find you've got icon size. So we can increase that and it obviously makes it bigger. Now, the other option was icon class. So if I show you that under mobiles and tablets, what you need to put in here depends on font awesome. So coming over to widgets, let's just find an icon widget for a second. So by default, Elementor uses font awesome. If we click into here, you've got the font awesome library. There are loads of things on here that we can be using. We want something to do with a phone. Here we go, mobile. So this one is called Mobile Alt. Okay, this is important. So have a look through the different libraries. There's lots of options here, okay? Find the icon that you want, whatever it might be. And if it's two words, just pay extra special attention. Okay, so this one is Mobile Alt. So what we would need to do, let's close out of here, is here under icon class, we would put in FA, 
stands for Font Awesome. Space F A dash mobile dash alt. Okay, that's what you put in. Come on down, save the menu, head on back to our page. We can delete that because we don't need it. Uh, refresh. And there we go. We now have our mobile that has appeared in front. So it's just down to you whether you would like to use icons or whether you'd like to use images. But that is how you add them in front of your menus. So I am going to add a few more in and you can rejoin me in just a second. So there we go. I have added more icons in. And by the way, something else you can also do is upload your own. So you've got the ability to upload icons if you don't find what you want within the Font Awesome library. Okay, so now it's time to look at content settings and styling for our menu. So click into the widget. As you know, we selected our menu earlier on. This one is a horizontal menu. Here we have the option to open it on hover or on click. If you have it on click, people will physically have to click the links in order for the mega menu to appear. Personally, I prefer hover. I think it's a lot nicer. You then have the menu effects. You've got the fade up or down or the fade in and out. You do also have the two options with JavaScript. Um, now these do give smoother transitions. Uh, they will look nicer. However, they might not work with all of the elemental widgets. So try it out. If you have any problems, then just switch to one of the other two options. You then have the extra options tab. This allows us to change the alignment. We can put it over to the left, the right, or in the middle. And you then have a sticky menu option, but that is a subject for a different video. This one is just about the mega menu. We then have our mobile menu. Now, this is really useful, okay? You can have the responsive mobile menu on. This is really important because by default, mega menus don't tend to look that good on mobile devices. The problem is that when you open them up, they're gonna fall out of uh, the screen, okay? And that is why the plus add-ons very usefully give us the option to change what mobile menu is gonna appear. So, first of all, you have this option, open mobile menu. This is where you can set the pixel size of the screen, the point at which your menu will change. So you can have one menu showing on a desktop or a laptop, and then when it reaches this particular width, it'll switch over to your mobile menu. Now we'll have a look at those options in a second, but this is the important part down here, menu content. So you can have a normal menu, and here we could select our menu. We could have the mega menu that we created, or you could have just a normal, ordinary menu that you create in the appearance section of WordPress that isn't a mega menu, okay? And that way, it's not gonna potentially go out of sight on a mobile screen. So choose the menu that you want from here. Alternatively, you've got the option to have a template menu, and this is if you've created something with Elementor templates. So as you know, we created, or are creating, I should say, our header template within Elementor at the moment but you could do that for a completely separate menu for the mobile if you wanted, and then you could just choose it from here. Really, really useful. Okay, then up here we've got menu type, toggle or swiper, so you can change which one you want. Personally, I prefer toggle. You've then got different options for the style, so if you watch up here, it's gonna change what this looks like. So we've just got the two bars, got them sort of staggered, which looks nice. You've then got the uh, classic hamburger, all the same. So just have a playthrough. You can also customize it as well uh, and then give it a particular icon if you want to, which is quite cool. Or an image if you prefer. But I'm just gonna leave this on our classic hamburger styling. By the way, uh, the reason you're seeing this is because we've copied it over from the Plus Add-ons website. It's just there for you to make things easier. Obviously, when you're designing, you can just delete these and then they won't appear. Now let's head back to the desktop view and it's time to look at the style tab. So we've got a few options here, starting with the main menu, we can change our typography. So we can increase or decrease the size of this. You can change the weight, transform it, make it all uppercase, lowercase, change the letter spacing and the line height all the normal things that you can do with Elementor. We can then change the padding. 
top and bottom. And you can also change your inner padding as well. So if I reduce this down, you'll see that it's going to bring them close together. Help them fit on the same line. So you can play around with that, get it to where you want it. You can choose whether you want to have the indicator there with the little arrow drop down. I like it, so I'm going to leave it on. And then we have the normal hover and active colors. So you see that when I'm hovering over it, it's changing to this color that we have over here. You can also set a particular active color so that the one you click on stays that particular color. So for example, if we wanted to change the color of our icons, click on here, let's change them over to green. They've changed. Go over to hover, change them to, let's say a blue. And now when we hover over it, that has changed. Don't forget, you can change your icon sizes as well, make them bigger or smaller as you wish. And we can also change the indicator color, which is the little drop down arrow that we have over there. So we can change that if we want to. If you wish, you can have on box borders. I don't like it personally, but you can. And then obviously you can change the border radius as well. We've then got the option for background colors if we wanted one. You can also have an image if you'd like. And then you've got box shadow options too. Then you can obviously just play around with these, choose where you want those shadows to go to. I'm going to leave that off. So those are your menu options. Next up we have the submenu styles. So if we take a look back at their example, they actually have a drop down menu. Now this isn't a mega menu, which is why I haven't put it in. But you could do this if you wanted. You can have some parts of your menu being a mega menu, other parts not being. If we go back to menu, all you would need to do in order to achieve that is instead of going to the plus mega menu, just go to your regular pages. Okay, choose normal pages, add them to the menu, create custom links if you want, add them to the menu as well. They are not going to be mega menus because of course we're not using the mega menu section to add them. Once you've done that, obviously just click save and that can create a drop down menu which will be normal like this but that gives us this sub menu and then obviously you can add in labels again exactly the same way I've already shown you and this setting that we have up here allows us to change all of that so you can change the padding border styles border colors and obviously all of your widths as well and again background color types and images it's exactly the same settings as we've just looked at up here and then you have the sub menu inner options. So just bear in mind that the further you go into a menu, these are your sub menu inner options. So you've got your sub menu, then you've got your inner options. You can edit all of those as well in exactly the same way that we've just looked at. You then have your mobile menu style. We'll just take a quick overview of this because there is another video that looks at mobile menus and the header navigation. But you can change the toggle height. Again, this is your toggle over here. So we can change that if we want to. Change the color, change the navigation width, how we want it to open. Obviously change the typography of your menu specific to the mobile again. Change all the padding, all of the colors and your icon sizes. So again, it's, it's really all the same options but purely for the mobile. But make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can get updated with the new videos coming out and the in-depth look at all of this. Exactly the same with extra options just down here. Things like main menu hover effects and inverse hover effects. These are really cool. We're going to have a look at those in the header navigation video. Before we finish though, let's take a look at these labels. So as you know, we put in this label up here. Under the main and submenu label option, this is where we can start to edit this. So you can change your label typography. We could make it bigger if we wanted to. And then you can change the offset. So we can start moving this around. Maybe I want it at the beginning or maybe in the middle. You can also move it up and down if you want to. We can change the padding. That's obviously going to make it bigger or smaller depending on where you put it. We could also add in a border if we wanted to. Let's give it a couple of pixels border, maybe change the color over to sort of a light blue. We could do that. We could add in a border radius if we wanted, which is 
going to start curving it up. Instead of it being rectangular, make it more of an oval. And you can obviously add in background colors and images again if you want. I'm going to get rid of this. I like it how it was. But it's good to know that you have these options. There's so many. Really easy to customize your design here, make something unique. And you can do exactly the same for your sub menus as well. So again, if you remember, in our drop down, we have the labels here. You can change the offsets of those, move them from side to side, up and down, change the font sizes and weights, and obviously the padding and those border radiuses too, just as we've looked at there. When you have finally done that and got your design as you want it to be, you can click on publish, choose where you want this to display. So we can add a condition. If we wanted our header to appear on the entire site, we can do that. Or if you want it just on particular pages, choose the pages that you want. You can type them in, it's really simple. I'm just gonna keep this on the entire site. Save and close. And now let's take a look. So there we go, we have now created beautiful mega menus. You know how to make them vertically, horizontally, and also with that navigation sidebar, so you can have a toggle. We know how to add in the icons, the labels, create templates so that these all appear for us using any of the Elementor widgets. And because you can save these to different pages, it means that you could have different mega menus across different parts of your site. As you saw, I saved this to our entire website, but if you wanted, you could save them to individual pages and simply create mega menus using the plus mega menu section and then coming into appearance and creating new menus for different parts of your website. So there you have it. That's how you can create beautiful mega menus for WordPress thanks to the plus add-ons for Elementor. Thank you very much again for watching and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the upcoming videos.